You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coon hounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Hey everyone, Alan Gingrich here, Director of Hunting Ops at United Kennel Club, and I have a couple of very special guests with us today. I have Mr. Uh, Donnie McVeigh. Thank Donnie, you. welcome. Thank you. And your brother, Dave McVeigh. Thank you, Alan. Uh, staples in the sport and, and in our hunting beagle format, so appreciate you guys coming here and sitting down with us. And the McVeigh Memorial Hunt is coming up this fall, be here before we know it. So uh, that's going to be our topic today, obviously. So uh, uh, I want to kind of dig into that a little bit. So let's start uh, Let's start by uh, talking about your dad a little bit. It's the Don Sr. McVeigh Memorial event that we're going to talk about. But uh, describe your father. Who, who was Don Sr. McVeigh and what, and what was his trade? Um, he was a mechanic by trade. Uh, he owned his own service station. All, all five boys grew up within that service station. And a strong family man, and uh, therefore the memorial. And, um, yeah, they, he just really enjoyed uh, being around the family and always loved to hunt. Yeah. The hunting was something that was in his DNA probably as a, as a kid already, was Absolutely. it not? Absolutely. He hunted all through his childhood growing up. And um, all of us five boys were raised behind a dog somewhere, yeah. whether it was a coonhound or a beagle. Yeah, so is that mechanics, uh, is that something you boys worked in the shop with him as well, you said? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Even mom. Even oh, the yeah. mom spent some time in there also. Yeah. We we had a full service station when you didn't get out and pump your gas back then. You know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. So, we all know, and from what I remember, I remember Don uh, from the hunts early on. I, I want to say he was first trial I went to in, in Ohio. Uh, he was there. Donnie, you were there with yeah, him as well. Yeah. So I remember your dad uh, from back in those early days. I, he was uh, he was a, a guy that, uh, from what I remember, just knew him right away. I think I saw pictures of him in the magazine and things like that. When I see him on the grounds walking across there right away, you know who Don Sr. was. Yeah, he always uh, tended to kids. If you ever noticed, he, he was on down. He did. He would uh, get them and help them show their dog or help them get them on the bench. Yeah. And, Little things like that. Yeah, yeah. He was, yeah, so he was always involved with the hunting or the UKC hunting beagle format. Were there any other formats that he competed yes, in? Yes, he did. He was in, we competed in ARHA oh, yeah. format and uh, with the beagles and stuff. But uh, he had some champions in, in ARHA. Yeah, so uh, uh, do you remember those days? Uh, like, how old were you guys when you did you, were you involved? Did you go with him to those trials before UKC? Yes, we did. Um, Dave came in kind of later on the play, playground, but uh, um, yes, it was, I was probably about 16 years old, somewhere near 15, 16. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but we'd had pleasure dogs. We pleasure hunted. Yeah. But to start the, the trials, it was, it was in that age. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. So I remember he had the sundown name, sundown kennel name. Your dad did, I remember. Mm -hmm. And I know you boys kind of, kept that name for your kennels as well. But where did that come from? Where did the name come from? The the name come from uh, the Coonhound side. Uh, we were Sundown uh, it was Sundown Kennels. And uh, obviously for Sundown, going out hunting. And then uh, when his health changed and we went to the Beagles, uh, we just kept it. Uh, everybody knew him with the Sundown Kennels. And, uh, and then when he passed, uh, Donnie and I talked about it and we just thought it was appropriate to just keep right on going. We yeah. get asked that a lot. Yeah. And that actually kind of makes more sense, comes from the from the coon mm -hmm. side of it, I guess. So, yeah. And uh, your dad actually hunted, what was it, black and tans, I think? Coon owns is what he hunted? Yeah. Correct. That's correct. He he always appreciated a good hound, though. I'm not saying he didn't have some walkers and some red bones, and but he, he, uh, he appreciated a good dog, but he hung his hat on the Black and tans. Yeah, I remember in Ohio, Dean Miller is a guy who hunted black and tans, and Dean used to talk about your dad a lot. Yeah, him and dad was very close friends. Uh, dad kind of helped him out, and he helped dad out, and, and uh, they had some great hounds. 
Yeah. So was he just a pleasure hunter with the coon hounds or did he hunt in night hunts too? Or Some, uh, mostly pleasure hunt. Um, you know, we did a lot of, uh, you know, dad used it a lot to subsidize Christmas. Oh yeah. So back when hides were, were, uh, worth something, we would have, it was nothing for us to have 150 coon in the freezer. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, us boys, we primarily went to pack them out. Yeah. Uh, because dad loved to skin them. So when his health went down, we, we were the pack mules to get them coon out. Oh yeah. And when you're 15 years old, carrying a 30 pound coon, yeah, <laughs> you grew up real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, so your dad had beagles. You, you probably don't ever remember a time when you didn't have dogs, probably always no. around dogs, huh? No, I can't remember a time. Yeah. Me neither. So you, you boys have had a lot of success, but, uh, what were some of the beagles that your dad might have talked about? Or did he have any standouts that he talked about a lot? He had one he really treasured. Um, his name was Sundown Red Owl. Oh, yeah. And uh, I always remember the hunt. We went to an ARJ world hunt in 1995, I believe. And uh, uh, the first cast, uh, we went on, rabbit went across this lake. And Red Owl, dad swum him every day and he uh, swam after that rabbit. And I never will forget, the judge told me, he said, son, you just stay here. I'll get around the other side and I'll pick up your dog because none of the other dogs would go across that water. And uh, so he went on. We ended up placing fifth in the world. Oh, and, yeah. and that was a huge hunt for my dad to win. Uh, he bragged about that. And mom would set his trophies uh, out of the living room into the bedroom, dad would pack them back out, especially that one. So to this day, it's sitting in my basement. Oh, so, yeah. That's a good memory, yeah, huh? Yeah. What about, uh, so you're talking a little bit about the com uh, the competition side. Did you guys go on a lot of rabbit hunts with, with your dad, just rabbit hunting too? Yes, we did. Thanksgiving yeah. morning was was rabbit day. Yeah. So, yeah, we that was a tradition, family tradition. We yeah. would go Thanksgiving morning. Yeah. Any other special hunts that you guys remember with your dad maybe? I, for me, to be quite honest with you, it was all of them. Yeah. Um, even the hunts that uh, he wouldn't attend, you would have to give him a play-by-play -play when you got home. Uh, and he wanted to know, you know, from the get-go, how everybody struck, how everybody lined. And and so, so yeah, it was special it, to return home and get him to, you know, go through that. Yeah. Um, all those were very special. Uh, like Don said, I came in a little later and, and his health had turned, you know, at, on the downhill side. And, um, so yeah, it was a big deal for him that if I didn't call on my way home, yeah, I was in pretty big trouble. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd better, he'd better be my first call. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that, uh, you guys are kind of known for have always been, you've done a lot of winning but also there's there's preparation involved. How was your dad with that? Did you learn that from your dad? Absolutely. Preparing there's for a hunt, getting no dogs doubt, ready? No doubt. That if you didn't, he always said, uh, if you was not out hunting your dog, John Doe is. Yeah. So yeah. you you got you to gotta hunt that dog. Yeah, yeah. And if you didn't, he had ways of hunting. Um, a little story I'll tell you. There was a man came to me and, and we still use it to this day. Um, there was a man came to me and said, I want to tell you something about your dad. And I said, what's that? He said, he told me to take a bell and put on my female when she had puppies. And when I took them puppies out, he said that the puppies all knew where mama was out because they could hear the bell. And he yeah. says, I always watch for that pup that went father south. Oh, yeah. And that was usually the pup I kept to hunt. He oh. said, I got that from your dad. Yeah. I've been a lot. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah, so let's move forward a little bit. Uh, there's five of you boys in the family. No girls, right? Just the five no, boys. All five boys. boys. Yeah. So uh, all D's, Donnie. Then you had a brother, Danny, and then Dave. You're third in line. And then you have a brother, Dick, and then Denny. Uh, so, yeah, five boys. Uh, I'm sure that was probably a handful, probably more for your mom than it was your dad. But. Yeah. <laughs> when mom hollered, we all came. Yeah. <laughs> she was the boss, huh? <laughs> Hey, speaking of your mom, Veda, what a gem. Yeah. Man, anybody that knows your mom, uh, and we see her at the Beagle hunts and and uh not she comes to the nationals, you know, of course we all see her at the at your memorial hunt, you know, but she'll be at the nationals and everybody knows her and 
I think everybody just has a lot of respect for mom, but you can tell she is the matriarch of the McVeigh family. She's yeah. the glue. Yeah. And she's the glue. Uh, you know, dad, dad was the leader, but mom was the glue. Yeah. And uh, she still is. Yeah. Uh, and believe us, all five of us know it. Yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. She's, uh, you know, she really is. A gem is a good word to say. So. Yeah, absolutely. just, uh, you know, I really got to know her a lot, uh, you know, soon after Todd Morgan left and I kind of became more familiar with the memorial hunt or whatever and got to know her better. But, yeah, you're right. She's just a. Uh, and still in good health. Oh, still in great health, actually. Seems like. Yeah, she she uh, she keeps. I say she keeps the roads hot, and we love it that way. Yeah, she yeah. she stays active. She stays with her sister Dorothy, which is at the hunts a lot. Yeah, yeah. And um, they're a big part of our club yeah. with our fundraisers and so forth. Uh, yeah, and actually, uh, on a side note, she just went into our Coshocton County Beagle Club Hall of Fame this. Oh, past really? Year. Well, that's good. So yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. She's got a sign on her door that says. If I'm not here, come to Walmart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I've sat there when the hunters were out uh, at the McVeigh hunt or whatever, talked with your mom a little bit, but she likes to talk. She has told me all kinds of stories about when you boys were little, taking, carrying you boys around to play music. Yeah. Where did that, where did that come from? Was your dad a, was your dad a musician? My well? dad played music. Yeah. He had a little band that he played, and he played a lot of different places down around there. Dad was a very good singer. Yeah. And uh, and it's, it traveled through us. It was yeah. nothing for us to uh, have a 10 or 15 musicians come into our, our house on weekend, and we all sit there and jam. Yeah. Music was a big part of our family. Yeah, I, I see that now, you know, and I know you play your brother Danny. He brings a guitar mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. to, the, to the hunts, and I guess you didn't really get that. Town no, did you, Dave? No, I didn't. I kind of went on the sports side, and yeah. I'd be off playing men's yeah. softball, and and uh, they would be playing music. Yeah. So, and now Dan or, uh, Donnie, you've kind of passed it on to your boys, Tim and uh, 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 see what's Ryan, 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 Ryan yeah. Tim and Ryan. You know, uh, uh, Tim has played for us at Autumn Oaks the last several years, two or three years. Yeah, in a row he's and, really enjoyed that. And yeah, that's a nice. Yeah, and he does a great job with yeah. it as well. So yeah, he's done well. Yeah. So who was uh, who was how. How did you get hooked on the sport of beagling? It was just through your dad, I'm assuming. But uh, Donnie, you kind of got you were you were kind of involved right from the pretty much yeah. from the beginning. Yeah, me and my brother Dick was involved, and Dad with the the coon hounds. And but all of us, all all the boys, had to go. You know, you went coon hunting to help get the coon out. Uh -huh. So yeah, uh, but we all was involved. But me and Dick was probably the ones that did the most for him. I I got you. Yeah. Um. So moving forward a little bit from that, you guys have been highly successful as breeders throughout the years. Uh, that's a kind of a known thing. Uh, who or what do you attribute your good breeding practices to? And what are two of the most important items that might be on your list when it comes to breeding? And in, in other words, what do, you, what do you look for and how did you become so successful? Well, that? this is easy for me. Um, I just rely on Donnie. Don, yeah. Donnie's the brains, and I'll tell anybody, Donnie's is the brains behind the breeding program of Sundown Beagles after Dad left, uh, or after his passing. Um, and he took a lot of what Dad did. But, um, you know, I had Donnie. Yeah. I didn't have to worry about where the next dog was coming or anything like that. Uh, he always kept me in good hounds. Uh, he preached much like our dad, that if we couldn't reproduce it, then we weren't much breeders. Mm -hmm. So we were constantly trying to uh, better what we had. Um, we never seemed to be satisfied. Uh, we also spent a lot of time and effort in breeding for the total dog. We, we always felt that um, a, a well-put-together dog can last a lot longer and dad would always say it doesn't cost any more to feed an ugly one as it does a good looking one. Yeah. So, so we tried to, you know, go for that total dog a lot because he loved to show, but we also demanded our dogs to hunt and uh, perform in the field. Uh, to answer the second part of that question about what we, uh, what are the two most valuable traits? Um, you know, I thought it was interesting, Donnie Yant's podcast that he, that he explained the nose. And uh, for me, uh, the dog has to have brains and heart. 
you can't put that in a dog. And, um, and the third part is trust. When you compete um, at the higher levels, you have to know whether that dog is right, whether that is, she is good bark or if it's not as good bark, whether he has it or whether he doesn't. And when you build that trust with that dog, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, it's big that um, it's a hard thing to do, but sometimes you have to call dogs out. And, um, and I know we have uh, called certain dogs. It's turned out to be awesome hounds for other people, which is great. That's what it's about. And, uh, but for me in competing at the, at the levels that I felt like, that trust was a big issue. And uh, for me, when I lost that trust, I would go to him, I'd say, find me another one. This yeah. one isn't going to work. And he'd yeah. be like, what? This is, you haven't given him a chance. And I'm like, yeah, I've lost the trust in him. So, so yeah, I mean, uh, that was a hard part that way. Uh, but, but yeah, as far as the breeding, I'm going to let Donnie turn that over to him, but he was the brains behind it. You see me nod to him for him to take that question. But <laughs> yeah. Anyways, it's, it's got, it's got a lot to do with what dad taught us. You know, he, he hated a dog that would take off and not hunt. He wanted a dog to hunt with him. Uh, one of the dogs that I have to bring up is um, Sundown um, RTK Ace. We had him, Sean's Ace. Um, he, we almost had to bandage him up every time that, that we took him out because he, he hit the brush. As soon as we turned him loose, in the brush he went. And that's King's uh, litter mate. And that's one of the reasons we kept him. But uh, um, you're talking about uh, Mark V's King, one Alexander ended right, up with. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. right. And uh, I have a good little story about that. If, if yeah, the share is yeah. a part that uh, I never will forget. I was at Killbuck, uh, Holmesville, Ohio, uh, Valley Club there. And uh, I worked this puppy. We bought two puppies off of Richard King. It was uh, Sundown RTK uh, King and our, also uh, Sundown brandy that we got from from richard and uh i trained this puppy from you know six weeks old and uh anyways i came in from the hunt i won second i'm so glad and this coming is with back king you're with talking. king yeah. yep i won second with him coming into the clubhouse so proud and my dad said i sold your dog yes and uh i didn't know what to think and i thought he was joking he said no i sold your dog to lee oxander and uh, but he was he was a he was a tremendous dog. It's shown great signs. Yeah. So and then we went back and we bought Ace and uh, we worked him till he yeah. passed away. So. But, yeah, I think I think some folks obviously know that that's where King came from. Your kennels, you know, but uh, that's a pretty neat story, you know. But then yeah. the dog went on to win the UKC World Championship and and a reproducer. He's still sitting up there in the top three yeah. or four as far as reproducers goes on on our uh, list and. What, what a hound that turned yeah, out. Sure. Lee Alexander was a, he did well with him. Yeah. Really and, and Richard King needs to get the, the uh, credit for that breeding. He, he bred them. Dad bought those three hounds from Richard as pups, yeah. but they were raised and trained at, at our facility. And uh, that made it, you know, that made it great. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's one, but uh, that's a good, a good place here to kind of segue into a little bit. You, you have all been very successful in, uh, in competition with your beagles. Uh, let's talk about some of those. What are, what are some of those dogs that, uh, that you did a lot of winning with? Let's talk about the world championships. How many world championships do you have? We have more than any other. I know that. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, we have five. Uh, we've been very blessed. Over the years. Five in UKC, actually. Five in UKC. We have uh, four hunting titles and one show title. And um, the, I guess the one I want to talk about the most is... Uh, well, let's mention all of them. Sundown but, yeah. Tess was a world hunting beagle and a world um, performance pack. She had actually won both world championships. Yeah. Then we have... Uh, Sundown. Um, and the only dog in UKC to win both of those like that. Yeah. Uh, we're proud of that. Yeah. But, you know, records are made to be broken. Yep. So, you know, we'll, we'll be um, glad to have somebody part of that group when they happen to repeat. Um, but our second one was uh, Sundown Gage 8. 
Uh, Gage was, uh, you know, just a tremendous hound. We'll talk more about him later. And then uh, we had Sundown um, Willie Brown and was, was the fourth of the titles. And then our show champion was Sundown Ring Rep. In, yeah. And you also won a lot of hunts with him, just not a world a world hunt, I guess, with him. But yeah, there's a, and and there again, uh, you're talking about the dual the dual dogs, uh, well built dogs. Right. You mentioned your dad was big into that, but there again, it just goes to show you guys carried that on. Well, we were that year that we won the world show and hunt was uh, pretty special because we won the world show on Saturday um, evening for the show. And we're on cloud nine. Yeah. And we had made the semifinals with Tess in the hunt. Never in our wildest dreams did we think we were going to pull off a world and show. And she was the on. first one. She was number yes. one, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. With us. Yeah. And were so, you, who was handling? Were you handling I was, her? I was yeah. handler, yes. Yeah. Yep. So what was that like? What was that experience like oh, winning man. your first one? Um, you know, to win your first world championship, I mean, it's just an honor to be in the finals. And I remember Mark Major or Mike Majors and uh, Larry Hicks were the two other guys in the cast, and um, and Scott Fluhart and Ralph Saunders and Clint Shaw were the three judges. And I, I remember at one point during that hunt, uh, Tess was known as the Chicken Dog because she would, when she was running a track, she'd sound like a chicken, and the hotter it was, the <laughs> faster she clucked. <laughs> And uh, so, uh, but anyway, she let out a big squall, and I struck her on that first squall, and it got quiet. And uh, I remember, I remember uh, Scott Fluart telling me, "Hey, you was a little soon on that one." You know? And I remember telling him, "No, if she loses this hunt, it's going to be because of her, not because I didn't strike her, not because I overthought her. She was going to lose it." And as it turned out, it worked really well, and it worked out in our favor. So yeah, that had to be an awesome experience, though. So not just one, you won more than one. Mm -hmm. uh, and did you handle all of all of the dogs to the I did. You did? I did. Uh part what of that, was the next one? Who was the next one? Gage was the next one. Uh we uh won with Gage. Uh, another it it came down to two dogs. Uh Jed Nichols was uh the other handler and um great two dog cast. And you know, it came down to the last few minutes. And uh, Jed's dog made a mistake, and and it, and it, you know, ended up. Gage got the brakes, and and ended up as the world champion. And you know, the thing about Gage was uh, probably the thing I'm most proud about Gage is that, as far as I know, he might be the only dog that placed in the top four in all four of UKC's major events in a 12 month period. Yeah. And um, he finished, Donnie actually handled him in the finals of the Nationals, where he placed fourth. And I handled him in the Eliminator, where he placed third. And I won the world with him. And then in HBA days that year, he won it. Yeah. And uh, so, so we were pretty proud of that accomplishment, uh, that he was just a very consistent hound. It's got to be one thing to win a world hunt like that with a dog and then to come back and just nullify it with, with some of those other wins like that he had. It, it is. I mean, yeah. um, you know, I've told folks before that it's really neat when I can remember with Tess multiple times we'd be at a hunt and uh, they'd call him out, the cast out. Mm -hmm. And you would hear somebody on a cast go, oh, man. And, and – you just knew that okay, she had built a name for herself, and that's what made it. That was what made it really special. Yeah, yeah. And then the last one was Willie Brown, and he was our backup pound. I, you know, I took Gage and Willie to Missouri, and he was our backup. And I thought, you know, we'll be all right. Uh, and Gage lost in the first round, and Willie just kept winning. I mean, he just kept winning. Uh, Joe Brown and Dave Hummel. Uh, were the other two handlers on that cast. And, um, and you know, it, it came down to a line, and Willie got second line, and, and um, you know, it, it, it just, you know. And I can tell you, Alan, 
the fourth one is just as pleasurable as the first one. That was gonna that was where I was gonna go. But I remember the one with Willie. I remember the one with Gage as well, but Willie, you know, so the first one had to be special. But I saw you with your dog after the hunt. And, you know, you had to kind of see that. But the, you know, just the picture of you out there on the ground with Willie there. And sure. I think I think that photo made the front cover of the American Beagler. It did. Uh, and, but just to see that picture just spoke volumes, yep. you know, and to say, uh, you know, that they're not just a special second, third time around, just like, and in this case, the fourth time around with Willie. Absolutely. Like, yeah. As, absolutely. Yeah. So. All right. So we talked about the, uh, three world championships, uh, the first one with Tess and then, uh, Gage was the second one. And then the third one with Willie, the hunting beagle format. Uh, but there's another one here, uh, Tess again, talk about that. Yeah. Tess won the world, um, performance pack, performance pack, hunting, uh, beagle, hunting beagle first. And then she came back and right. Um, you know, again, um, it, the event happened to be in Coshocton, um, and four other really nice hounds, because in Performance Pack, we had five hound groups. And, um, I mean, it, it was a close, uh, but Tess kind of turned it on in the second part of that hunt and kind of made it a no-brainer who was going to win at the, there in the last little bit of it. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty special. To pull off, and she was quite the little hound. I mean, she had titles. I've said for many, many years that uh, good beagle doesn't know rules, and all the formats uh, promote a beagle knows how to run a rabbit and run it right. And Tess actually had uh, titles in little pack. She had titles in performance pack. She had both performance pack and hunting beagle titles along with the worlds, and. Uh, I actually was able to get her AKC registered when she was seven, took her to five AKC trials, to which she placed in three of them. So she was a pretty all-around hound. I mean, just a solid hound. Yeah, and as did Gage 8, too. He was, uh, not to take anything away from him, he was he did well in both formats as well, too. Yeah, he, he did. He, he was very successful in both uh, performance back and, yeah. and hunting beagle. Yeah, I've heard you t tell a lot of stories about Tess, and I can tell I didn't get to ever get to hunt with her. I wish I would have, but I'm pretty sure uh, I would have liked that dog as well. 13-inch dog. 13-inch, yeah. yeah. She was true. She wasn't over. She was 13 inches. So all of these dogs are dogs that you basically bred and, and trained up, right? Well, Tess was a, well, Tess was a product of when Dad sold the uh, Alexander King. Yeah. Uh, King is her sire. So. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's um, – Let's talk a little bit about how did how did you guys work? I know you handled a lot of the dogs in the competitions and the trials. Did you also get them ready, or Donnie? Did you do a lot of that work, or who did that? Somebody had to get these dogs ready. You didn't just get I them out a, of the kennel and and win a world championship. I think I might have been the guy behind the scenes. Yeah, and I enjoyed that part. Yeah, but yeah, you know, I was constantly watching pups and watching the dogs work. And Dad, we had a starter pen, so we had all the convenience right there at home we didn't have to go out and do much but it was just part of just run 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 yeah. and run yeah were those four that we talked about that one the world uh world hunts and and such or the yeah the four uh were they uh or the three three different dogs i guess but you won four with them were they uh could you tell at a pretty early age that they were going to be special dogs? there was something special about those dogs i can say this i know gauge eight was brought there. We was going to sell him. We bought um, <laughs> his brothers. And anyways, this dog, I can honestly say, fell in love with Dave. Dave would go and let him out of the truck. He would go get in his box by himself. And if he heard Dave's voice anywhere, he was wanting to get to him. And uh, that's why that Dave ended up, I still say this day, that that was such a strong combination right there that yeah. it had been tough to beat him. Yeah. So, so we've talked about this, Dave. I know you were also big in the challenge series back in the day. Let's talk about that a little <laughs> bit. What was what was what was one of the good hounds you had running the challenge series? Well, Tess. Tess. Uh, she actually won the challenge series in the junior female. 
a group came down to the very last hunt in Saltville, Virginia. We'll never forget it. Uh, and actually, Tom Ware and his hound, uh, we tied. At the end of the challenge series, we were tied. And UKC had to go through their tiebreak rules to, uh, to award test the overall win. And so, yeah, it was, it was um, you know, the thing with the challenge series was just so big that uh, you're, you're a hound, you're, you're putting them in a box, you're traveling all night, and sometimes um, you'd have switch sites from one night to the other. So you'd hunt Saturday night here and take off and go Sunday somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, that's, that was really tough and grueling on them dogs. I remember one time we hunted in Virginia in, you know, almost 100-degree weather, and the very next weekend we're hunting in 30-degree weather in Michigan. And, you know, um, so, yeah, it's, it's, we always enjoyed that challenge series because we just thought it was a grueling race. And every local showed up wanting to see how they compared to your hound. They wanted to run against these top-notch hounds. Yeah. And so the challenge series was always pretty special to us because we felt like it was, uh, it was a true testament of your dog mm-hmm. and how they perform in all the different conditions. Um, so yeah, we were pretty, we were pretty, uh, passionate toward that yeah. challenge series. Yeah. So, uh, she was one of them you ran. There was another one that you ran triple threat. Triple threat also. Um, he won the, the male, all age male, the one year. And, um, and he, I'm going to let Donnie tell you about threat, uh, that you're talking to something pretty close to his heart. So. Yeah. Yeah. Threat probably was my pick of, of hounds. Um, I raised him from a little baby and. Yeah, uh, it was a tough day to see him leave. And he uh, and that was uh, Willie Brown's uncle. So that whole family of that breeding that we made with, with uh, to get that litter of, it was just special. It really was. Um, to this day, um, threat would come up and lay his head on you, or you could hold him or whatever. And if you noticed, you you seen those pictures. You're talking about Willie Brown. Yeah, Willie Brown was a lot like that. Um, he, he just was special. He was a special hound. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, let's get into a little bit of, uh, we could spend a whole lot of time with this, you know, and we want to get into some other things, but, uh, maybe another time, but just, just real quick from the both of you, uh, I'm going to ask you best or favorite McVeigh male, Donnie. Um, I'd have to say probably was tr- sundown down triple threat. Threat, the one you just mentioned. Yeah. Dave, for you, male. Mine would be Gage. Gage and why? Um, well, like Donnie said, he, he uh, with Gage, we, were, we bought that group to help a friend out. Uh, Terry Lowe had passed away, and, and we had helped his widow out by you know, getting rid of those hounds for her so she didn't have to deal with that. And uh, we were planning on selling them all. And Gage was one nobody wanted. Uh, we'd take them all out, show them all of them, and everybody just started picking this one and that one, and Gage was one left over. So, yeah. so we started hunting him hard and getting him ready to sell. And the more I hunted, the more he pleased me. And, and we took him actually hunting and had shot a rabbit, and he picked it up and <laughs> ran by everybody else to bring it to me. So, so yeah, we, we started getting a bond together. And when part back to that trust bit, he just got to be a trustful hound. And, and yeah, we made a pretty good team and we yeah. had fun doing it. So, yeah. So there's two males. Uh, what about females? You had a lot of good ones. So, yeah, we did. Um, I would probably go back a little bit and take Sundown Black Sugar Bear. Okay. And the reason for that, I want to say she's on our reproducer's yeah, list as well. She is. Yeah. But she got me triple threat. Got me. If you look, go back and look at those records, that litter uh, produced a lot of honey bickle champions, if not grants, that, that whole litter. Yeah. Um, they went on to, well, tr- triple threat won the grants at the nationals. And uh, his sister won the triple challenge down there. And uh, Aldi and... Also, threat one down there. So that whole litter did a great job. And, and if it wouldn't been for her, I wouldn't have been able to get those. So yeah. So Dave, how about you? Your hands your, down, Tess. Tess. You know, 
Um, I probably own better dogs. Gage was probably better. In my eyes, yeah. he'll never be better than yeah. Tess. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You fall in love with those special hounds, and and to accomplish what she accomplished was just, I mean, and and you know, she was she was easy to handle. Yeah. You know, uh, there's we've just we've just barely scratched the surface here. I know you guys have had a lot of other solid top hounds over the years, and I'd love to hear more stories like sure. this, but uh, maybe another time for sure. But we got to move on. So. But one of the things I wanted to ask you about, you had a lot of different events that you uh, that you competed at, and uh, what was what were some of your favorites all time? I I can answer this for both of us. Yeah. Um, the probably the favorite uh, event we enjoyed going to was the NBC Triple Challenge. Oh yeah. Um, it's it's an invitation of thirty hounds, and you have to compete in a large pack. You have to compete in a trio. And you have to compete on the bench. And many, many times uh, dogs would do well in two phases and not so well in the third. And it really did uh, come together to do what our breeding program wanted to do. Kind of we what you talked about earlier. Kind of take a rabbit dog can do well anywhere. Correct. It was probably one of our favorites. Uh, we were fortunate enough that two of our dogs – out of our kennels have have won that event mm -hmm. so that that always was a pretty prestigious uh win for us and of course we can't deny the world championships yeah but, yeah. yeah yeah you UKC, agree ukc has done as well so yeah. thank you yeah yeah all right well let's move on a little bit um let's talk about the a little bit of backstory about the mcveigh memorial what a divine tribute to your father Yes, it is. Um, Thank you. When and how did your family come up with the unique ideas for this event? Well, um, Don Sr. passed away in, in May of 2022 and um, Coshocton County Beagle Club. And actually, our brother Dick um, actually started the memorial originally. He came up with the plan to uh, do a memorial hunt, local hunt. Him, along with Dan Thornsley and, and several of the other Coshawn County Beagle Club, just got local uh, sponsorship mm -hmm. where they, you know, I, I remember we had a whole table full of hats and shirts and uh, car wash cards and, you know, oil changes and whatnot. And, um, and we had looked up some information and in that first hunt, we had just a little over 50 dogs in it. And, and when locals, was that? When was that? That was in 2002. Okay. It was in the fall of 2002. And because the hunt was usually in August. And so we, we, uh, we had that hunt. And then the following year, uh, same thing, uh, Dick and uh, Danny Thornsley and Max and several others there in the club, uh, we had the hunt again. And, and I think the second year we had in the 70s. And, you know, just people came to support. Um, and then in the third year, they had, um, you know, getting donations isn't fun, as many of us know. And, and so the couple of the guys, Dick and, and Danny, had said, hey, they were tired of getting donations and they'd like to, for somebody else, take a turn. Yeah. And so the family at that point said, you know, we would step up and we would, we would, handle the memorial for the Coshocton County Beagle Club. And uh, and since then, we've been running it ever since. And it's continued to grow uh, to the point that I believe last year we were in close to $70,000 worth of stuff we gave away yeah. in the whole event. And, and it's kind of started out with giving away hats and shirts and things <laughs> like that. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, without a, a large segment here, um, that's what makes it. Uh, we can't have big hunts without the people. Yeah. And big hunts struggle, and I'm sure you see this, with sponsorship if you don't have quality turnout. They want to know uh, what return on investment they're getting. And, you know, so I think a lot of it has to do with we the biglers uh, and, and just the hunter. Um, you know, when, when they come to the memorial, it's, uh, it's like a family event. And we also get into... Uh, and it's a vacation for a lot of folks yeah. at that time well, of year. Yeah, you know, and it's hard to explain. It's a hunt like no other. Yeah. And we promote it that it's the hunt that gives back to the hunter. 
And because uh, the McVeigh family gets not one dime from this hunt, we don't, uh, we're there in support um, and obviously for a great cause in our minds. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so yeah, the, the proceeds go to help some local uh, things. We build a dog park for the Coshocton, uh, city of Coshocton. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of Toys for Tot stuff and we do a lot of those kind of things. Yeah. We sell the proceeds yeah. locally. But uh, anything left over goes into the hunt the following year. Yeah. So. so what what were the formats? What format did you use early on? Uh, actually, it's always been hunting beagle, except for we had three years where it was uh, a PKC mm -hmm. hound and hunter format, mm -hmm. and and uh, but we've come back to UKC, and it's always been the hunting beagle format. Yeah. You know, uh, I'll, I'll interject there a little bit. I had called you after you had uh, you had. Uh, it's, it was PKC for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I talked to you about maybe what you're, you were thinking and I wanted to see what the opportunity, if there were any opportunities there. And you suggested I write your mom a letter. <laughs> and I did. I have that letter saved. So, Good. Yeah. Good. I could probably pull it up right here on the computer. Sure. And she wrote me a very nice letter back. So, and I kept that one as well, you know, but. Sure. Awesome. So, yeah. So, and then, so, so yeah, I came back to, to uh, UKC again and now is one of the, what we call the big five, mm -hmm. uh, the majors. And it, uh, it rivals, uh, the nationals in terms of when it comes to entries and entry numbers and the show for sure. But, uh, uh, what, what is the record number for entries that you have at the Memorial? Actually, you know what that is? Yeah. Actually last year was our record number. Last we, year was last yeah. year. We yeah. had 419 in the hunt. Wow. And yeah. Yeah. It was like, yeah. wow. Yeah. Um, but again, that's a tribute to those hunters uh, and coming and supporting it. Um, that's what it takes. I mean, there's there's a lot of moving parts to this hunt. There's a lot of financial responsibility to this hunt. And, um, and you know, as long as it continues to grow and as long as it continues to, to be what the hunters want, then we're going to do our best to to keep it here right here yeah and there's just so much more than a hunt yeah it's a good hunt it's a great hunt to win it's one of the top five as i mentioned but there's just so much more than just the hunt and like you said it's just unique it's like none other but uh uh one of the things that's unique and like none other is your show it also we talked about it has the highest number of entries in the show but it has a unique format tell us about that yeah um you know, in memory of our and Donnie, father. you jump in whenever oh, that's you. All right. That's all right. Uh, in memory of our father, it's. When uh, we're talking about breeding, we all, <laughs> everybody looks at you. But. In, uh, in memory of our father, you know, he always promoted, like I said, Total Dog. You've heard that several times here. And and he um, he was really big and in, in believed in that. So when we uh, really started to move the hunt forward, we, we felt it was important to credit a Total Dog. So. Um, what that total dog is for some of you that uh, maybe aren't familiar with it is when we have our finals, uh, the total dog usually gets into the finals. And all that requirement is, is that your dog must hunt and show. We get a lot of entries that say, Hey, I don't have a show dog. You don't have to. Um, the points is uh, kind of heavily favored in the hunt section of it. But you must hunt and show to so be. So you have a point system for, mm -hmm. for the hunt and the show, yeah. We do. We have a point uh, system to where if you win your class, uh, you get so many points. And if you win. Uh, class in the show, you're mm -hmm. talking about. And if you win a category, you get a few more points. Yep. And of course, if you win the overall show, you get a few more points there. But there's also the hunt side. So uh, we give points for if you've won and hunt. So therefore, a lot of times a dog that wins its category um, and does well in the hunt is our total dog. It's not always the show winner is our total dog. Uh, it has happened, uh, but uh, most years, well, I can say about every year we have somebody come up and says, if I just paid the $10 to show my dog, yeah. I would have won the total dog. Yeah. And... And, you know, we try to promote that the best we can. And so, therefore, is why we have one of the largest shows is because we do have um, some rewards for winning that total dog. Yeah, there and some nice awards, too. One of them is, obviously, uh, it also goes into, or it used to go into the, the final cast. Correct. And there's a big award for that, you know. But uh, and we're going to talk about uh, the 
the format that you have coming up for this year. But yeah, that's a that's a big thing. And, and the total dogs, you always put that total dog in there somewhere with this event, and that's just brilliant. Yeah, brilliant way to yeah. do it. That's what Dad believed in. Yeah. So. Let's talk about what you have coming up for this year's McVeigh Memorial. I know you've changed the format around slightly, so we want to hear the all the details you've got in in your plans for this year. I'm oh. talking about 2022. The date for it is going to be uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, September 8th through the 11th of 2022. So. That's correct. Yeah, we... We're constantly trying to figure out how to keep the hunt relevant and give the people what they want. So this year uh, we took the element. Uh, last year was a big change in that we had the uh, final four dogs being the dogs that won the most cast for the weekend. Well, the one thing I'll, I'll interject here is that kind of put a little bit of a damper into your format was when UKC went from the the old format, hunting beagle format, to the cast win format. But you guys uh, took the bull by the horns and, and came up with something, you know. And yeah, But, yeah, you're right. So go yeah, ahead. Yeah, so, so last Probably year. Probably presented a couple challenges, I would say. It did. But, it, I mean, in, in hindsight, you know, it, it helped our entry numbers. It, it uh, really, last year was a record-breaking year. And, and so it allowed us to set up some different things for this year. So that's the unique thing about it. Uh, this year, we're going to um, we're going to be starting Thursday night on the eighth, and we're going to build a top sixteen runoff that will start Sunday morning. And how we plan on building that top sixteen will be the top four dogs from Thursday night. Okay. So one round top. Four high-scoring hounds are going to advance to Sunday morning. Friday, we have two rounds, a morning round and an evening round. We are going to take the top four hounds Friday that are, that are double-cast winning hounds. So the top four um, highest-point double-scoring hounds or double-cast win hounds will advance Sunday morning for that 16. Okay. So that gives, now you have eight dogs in it. Correct. Half the field. Yep. We're going to do the same thing Saturday. Uh, top four double point or double cast win dogs will advance. That'll give us our, our 12. 12. I'll give you 12. The final, uh, now you must be a double point cast winner on Friday and Saturday to advance. Yeah. Okay. So... We will finish out the field of the worst case scenario. If you don't have four, then we will revert back to the final four requirements. You're not going to make a fourth one from. It's, no, it's going to be some come from somewhere else. If other than Thursday, you will have to be a double cast winner that day. Got it. Okay. The uh, final four dogs, or I should say, the final dogs that will make up the field will be, number one, our total dog. There you go. He automatically gets an advance entry. Uh, he goes to the final four. The remainder of the hounds, which could be three or more if we don't have double cast winners. Right. They will be made up of the dogs that have the most cast wins for the weekend from Thursday to Saturday. I got you. Interesting. So, our thought process is for the gentleman that can't get off work and can maybe only show up Saturday, he's got as good a chance to get in the finals as anybody else. He just doesn't have as many chances. Right. Uh, for the guy that just falls out of the top four, he can continue to run his dog and gain cast wins and get into the finals through the most cast wins. Yeah. So uh, we, we think it's the best of – all the worlds, we think that it'll uh, generate a lot of uh, interest. The carrot at the end of this is, as of today, uh, we're going to guarantee a $5,000 payout. And we hope to make that number larger within the next month. So um, 
With that being said, we're going to pay all 16 dogs. And there is a percentage breakdown um, that we're, that we're going to publish. And something in set in stone are still working on some of that? Uh, percentages? Yeah. Would you like to know those? Well, that's up to you. All if right. you want to put it out the, there, you the, can. If sure. not, well, I will tell folks where to go to look for it. But <laughs> sure. No. It's your uh, show here. Our, our thoughts are that we're going to give the winner 30%. Okay. The, uh, I should start out at the bottom. The bottom 12 are going to get 3%. So essentially, you know, with a five thousand dollar payout, if you ran your if you ran a dog in every round, it's going to be thirty dollar entry. You will essentially make the top sixteen. You'll get all five of your entries back. You're That's going good. to make one hundred and fifty dollars. That's good. Yeah. So after we get by those, um, we're going to give the fourth place dog. I believe it works out to be seven percent. The third place dog is going to get ten. And I believe, um, help me with the numbers here, Alan. Uh, I know the top dog's getting 30. And the second place dog will get the remainder. And I think it's like 17 or 18%. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. That's very interesting format. So, what are you still going to separate categories? Register, or there's all going to be one category? All run together. All run together. That's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, everything. Run together. Correct. And it's one still- One category. Yes, and it's still world qualifier, so yep. every cast winner will be qualified at, at all five of the um, hunts. Do you have if you're not qualified, you have a plus point cast win this year. You will be qualified, and it's the last chance to get in. It is, and uh, I believe you can pay your entry fee right there to you um, for the world. Yeah, that's that's right. I plan on being there, and I'll have those entry forms for anybody. And also yeah. we have NHBA points for all five rounds. So um, you can, you can, uh, you know, there's, there's a little bit for everyone. And the only, the only uh, caveat we're saying is that I do want to throw this in that we will have a 16 dog finals, which means once you qualify to go in, you can't requalify. So if you're the top four dog on Thursday and you turn around and top four dog on Friday, you're only going in once. We will take the very next town on the, on the list. So if you're in, point. you're not going to be counted again or you're Correct. not going to take up a spot. Doesn't is. mean you can't hunt. You right. can continue to hunt right. uh, for points and so forth. But once you're in the final, you're in the final. We are going to do our payouts because we do want a top 16. Yeah. Uh, we are going to do our payouts when we run the finals. You will get your payout when the scorecard is turned in. So, no, for anybody that's thinking that, okay, if we get the finals, just give us $150 and we're going home, you won't, you won't see it until the scorecard is turned in that day because we truly do want to create a top 16, and uh, we think people are going to compete for it. So, so you actually have to hunt on Sunday to get that. Yeah, yeah Donnie. Dave, also, we're welcome all formats to come to our hunt. Oh, absolutely. Because I'll be more glad to sign you up, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I would like to think this is probably one of UKC's largest events for single entries. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so we appreciate that also. Yeah. So, and, and you mentioned throwing it out there. You want to see dogs come in from other formats as well. And, and, you know, a lot of that question is going to be, well, what do I need to do? Does my dog have to be registered? Bring your dogs, your information on the dog's pedigree and things like that. We'll certainly get you set up. Sure. Uh, there's We have a thing where uh, uh, a non-registered dog, that's an option, or we can get your dog registered there at the event, and we'll be there to do all that. And it's fairly uh, fairly simple. Just bring your uh, bring proof of your uh, pedigrees and such. And, and, you know, I travel a lot, as you well know, and, I you know, I want to reiterate, if you – have a rabbit dog, a true good rabbit dog that knows how to run a rabbit, run it right. You can compete here. This is your format. You can compete. That you can compete here. You will you will have fun. I think what sets this event from everything else is we can only have one winner. And and with that said, we have a lot of people that lost. But when they attend the raffle Saturday night, 
they, a lot yeah. of them go home winners. Yeah. yeah, we'll get to that in just a little bit. But uh, yeah, man, I love it. You came up with some interesting things. I really like that. Well, we, we hope. I mean, you know, yeah. um, everybody likes money. And uh, so hopefully this will be uh, something we can build on. And, it's, and a lot of fun. Not yeah. just, it's, uh, it's, hey, there's competition there. There's a lot, there's a lot of fun. Well, there's a lot of moving parts to this event. We have a lot of raffles going on throughout oh, yeah. the day. We yeah. have, you know, a lot of that stuff gone. It's, it's, it, yeah. it's definitely an event. Yeah. Dave, there's something else that you uh, maybe ought to mention on is the part. This will be our second year for bringing the coonhounds in for the bench show. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I got that here in my notes to ask you guys. But before we do that, Calcutta's, you also do Calcutta's for the hunt. Is that, you're going to do all that again this Absolutely. year? Absolutely. And okay. thanks for your help because you're, you're real good about helping us uh, with the auctioneering of that. So absolutely, we do the cow cut. That tends well, to be. Well, I, really I don't know thing. about this year. You know, Willis Yoder. He's a, the <laughs> Willis was really good. He, he is. You know, and I actually work on with him on the side a little bit, and he uh, he knows I'm just an amateur or whatever. But he gave me this tape to work on, and I told him, I said, Willis, I had to start all over from scratch. <laughs> so if I'm going to be involved, I'm going to sound a little different because I had to. I wasn't doing anything right. Well, they, so. <laughs> that's good. But Willis was a big help last yeah. year, and and yeah. uh, and again, it's the support of those people. But there again, there's uh, guys have fun with that stuff, <sighs> and man, there's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of prize money there for the Calcutta stuff. Show format. How's that going to work this year? Um, show format. We're going to do the show Friday uh, in the afternoon, and uh, and then of course Saturday we're going to have. A coonhound show in the in the afternoon. Yeah, okay. So that's how it's all going to play out. We're going to do the Beagles on Friday, uh, in between round the morning round and evening round. Mm -hmm. uh, use that as a filler on Friday, and then turn around and uh, do the coonhounds on Saturday. So the only thing you have going in the middle of the day is basically your raffle stuff, uh, your money wheels, and all this and that. And you have a couple shows on Friday. You have the the Beagle show on Friday, coonhound show on Saturday. And uh, so that just makes it so much more relaxing. Last year, I really thought, man, if we can make that our nationals a little bit more like yours, I'd love that. Real, it wasn't so rushed, and sure. that's kind of where ours came from. But yeah, so uh, so yeah, raffles. Let's talk about raffles. What do you got on the docket this year? Okay, we of course we have our main raffle, uh, and that's the big one. Uh, we sell tickets a dollar piece, six for five dollars. And usually we have in the upwards of $50,000 on that raffle that allows us to, uh, and what's unique about our raffle is uh, if we pull your ticket, we verify it, you go back and get to pick what you like. Um, so, and as you know, Alan, for those that don't know, we have had major um, prizes in the past. And when you say major, you mean major. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, one year we gave away a four wheeler with a 870 shotgun on the front and a dog box on the back. Was somebody won it with a one dollar ticket? Yeah. And one year we gave away five 64 gun gun safes, and one of them had two thousand dollars worth of guns in it. So, and somebody won it with a one dollar ticket. Ray Lynn, Ray so, Lynn, Ray Lynn. <laughs> uh, Didn't so she win that? He, yes, Ray she Lynn did. Mercer. Yeah. Last year yeah. we gave away a varmint. Um, I hope they up. come out there to this, by the way. And yeah, I hope. Yeah. Uh, and, and it won't be because of lack of what I'm trying to do. So <laughs> the, uh, but in all honesty, they, they uh, were in the works right now of generating uh, the prize package this year. Uh, we've got some ideas on some of the major prizes, but we haven't secured them yet. And um, I'd made it, you know, once in a while you make a comment. And then you regret it. And one of the comments I made was a couple of years ago, I, I said, if this continues to grow, I'll, I'll have it to where we give away a truck. Yeah. I have kind of fell short on that, but, uh, <laughs> but, but we are continuing to work toward that goal. And, um, but, you know, we're going we're gonna to have a, a really nice raffle uh, for that. We also have a money wheel where we only sell 75 tickets. They're, they're in the process of, they're out there now. Uh, matter of fact, I, I put it out on uh, Facebook. Uh, we do have a Facebook web, uh, page for the Memorial Hunt. And what is the name of that Facebook? Don McVeigh Senior Memorial Beagle Hunt. Okay. And Folks uh, can search that on, absolutely. on Facebook. And it has all of our latest. 
uh, you can go on there and tell me if you want a money wheel ticket or uh, for some of those that doesn't uh, do Facebook, uh, you can get a hold of me. Um, and well, I'll, we're half I'll, sold, uh, aren't we? Yeah, we, I put it out last Sunday and, and I think we have 28 spots left. So they're going quick. They always go quick. Now, when you say last Sunday, we're recording this on like the 25th or 26th of July here. So yeah. And uh, so with just a little over a week, we've, we've sold uh, over half of them. They always go really fast. And then uh, we're going to have a gun wheel this, this year also. And I haven't put that out there yet, but it's going to be coming out very soon. And um, there again, you can get more information on that on your Facebook absolutely. page, probably. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, and for the person that's never been to this hunt, I strongly encourage them, even if you don't think you have the dog power or, or, hey, you're not comfortable with the format, you know, we're very selective of the judges we use. We try to use our best. And, um, and a lot of these guys are very helpful to walk you through. Uh, you can ask questions and so forth. And we have a lot of people just come to spectate sure, for their first year. Sure. They'll come and go out and spectate. But I would encourage you, if you're coming to spectate, throw the dog in the, the truck because you just may spectate one or two casts and say, hey, I can do I'm this. I'm ready for this. Yeah. And then you can enter the next day. Yeah. So so uh, I know a few years ago, you happened to be there uh, when we had a performance guy come. Mm -hmm. um, BJ and Kayla Yeti came and brought one of their hounds from that did really well in performance back. And lo and behold, he come out and he ended up winning and he got right into our finals. You know, there's a good example of a dog right there that just a solid rabbit dog that again can compete. Yeah. Can compete. And, and, you know, uh, really the only thing you have to know is your dog's bark. Yeah, and be able to call him, tell the judge when he opens and if such. Yeah. You know your dog's bark, and you can distinguish it out of other dogs. Um, you're come and enjoy. Yeah. Uh, because like I said, if all else fails and you don't do so well in your cast, you may just do well in the raffle. Yeah. Yeah, there's just so much more. The hunt is one thing, a lot of fun. There's a, a lot of good hounds there and and some competitive, uh, some competitive casts, this and that. But there's just so much more than that. One of the things we want to be thankful for, we got good members of our club. It helps out a lot. Absolutely. We have a lot of good. Uh, Talking about the Coshocton County right, Baby Club. Right. Uh, we do. We have, you might want to mention the officers, Dave. Yeah. Um, our president, Melvin McVeigh, and, and Jason Prater is our vice president. I'm the treasurer, and our secretary is Trent Weaver. And, um, and then our board members are, are Donnie and help me out here. Quick notice. Yeah, yeah, quick, quick, quick. Anyway, quick, we have quick. three board members. Uh, and and I'm sorry, they're gonna they're gonna say I can't believe you <laughs> forgot us. But anyway, we above that we have an awesome group and uh, we've challenged them this year. Your whole family is always there. We're absolutely we we as many members as we you can be there. Mm -hmm. Our wives and children, mm -hmm. and they all come and, and help wherever we need it. They're just I mean, it's I mean it's the one weekend of the year that we get to remember remember our father in a in a sport that he truly loved. Yeah. So you know we're pretty passionate about it. Um, lo and behold, we've never ever had any problems at this hunt, and we don't expect to. Yeah. I mean, it's just a different atmosphere. It's it's just yeah you know, a lot of fun. Man, that sounds like you've got a a good one planned for this year and the details. I I really like the uh, some of the unique changes uh but yeah again that's going to be thursday friday saturday and sunday will be the championship top 16 on sunday september 8th through 11th and that'll be held at the coshocton county fairgrounds in uh, coshocton ohio just uh, right there on the edge of town easy to find google it uh some hotels around there for folks oh yeah yeah plenty of hotels um you know most people are familiar with it but if you if you Google Coshocton, there's plenty of hotels for everybody. Although I will say, um, book your hotel early, uh, even now. Because Some folks camp there on the campground or on the at the fairgrounds, right? We have camping available, but but we have had in the past where the hotels do fill up. Yeah. I mean, we have plenty of hotel room, but uh, you know, 
that that this is a big hunt. Yeah. Um, we we typically fill all the hotels by the yeah. week. Yeah, well, like you said, uh, inviting everybody, invitations out there for anybody, and uh, whether you bring a dog or you don't, but uh, we uh, invite anybody to come on out there, bring a dog. If you want to go along on a cast or two before you put your dog in, that's fine. But uh, and you know what? Somebody new maybe come and just win their cast and qualify the world and just have the next world champion. That's true. That's true. So. Well, with that said, uh, folks, there's uh, there's so many more things that we could talk about here, but uh, we need to close it off here at some point. But I really appreciate you guys coming in today and, and sitting down here with us. Interesting stuff. But, uh, Donnie, do you have anything else you'd like to add before we close? I'd really like to thank you and UKC for everything you guys have done to help support the hunt because it means a lot. It means a lot to have you there, and you've been here for, I think, about all of them. So uh, my my family and – and uh, everybody that's connected to me, we, we thank you a lot. You're very welcome. Dave. Yeah, I, you know, I reiterate that. I mean, UKC's been good uh, to the memorial hunt and, uh, and to our family. And, and, you know, dad brought us up through UKC. So uh, we do appreciate it. And we appreciate all you do. And um, I want to thank you for giving us this opportunity today. Dave, I have one more thing. Don't forget your guitar. <laughs> so but we do we we do uh strongly appreciate it yeah well you're very welcome so with that said we're going to close out but uh again uh hope to see everybody at the 2022 McVeigh uh, memorial hunt Coshocton, ohio thanks for listening to the ukc hunting ops podcast be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and to like and follow ukc hunting ops on Facebook and Instagram.